This episode is in honor of celebrating the 100 year anniversary of Negro League Baseball and to announce a Pud Rodriguez autograph card giveaway valued at $150. To participate, you have to subscribe to our channel. At the end of the video, click on the subscribe button that looks just like this and like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Good luck to you. Well, we're proud to have retired big leaguer Ryan Bowen join us on the Autograph Ball in Action. Ryan played 12 years of professional baseball. He's born and raised in Hanford, California. Ryan was a first-round draft pick in 1986, selected out of Hanford High School as the 13th overall by the Houston Astros. Ryan, welcome to the Autograph Ball in Action. We're glad to have you. Well, thanks for having me, Kevin. It's always a pleasure. Yes, sir. Oh, and also to our viewers, uh, as a quick side note, sorry, I was out in the rain. I was walking dogs before I came in. Looks like I'm sweating. Um, quick side note, our viewers uh, might recognize Ryan as a star of our 2020 Autograph Ball commercial. And Ryan and several other retired pros volunteered their time to run a practice with the pros with me uh, back in 2017 at a, during a Love for Kids Christmas party. It was Ryan Bowen, uh, Kevin Belcher, uh, some other good good guys and uh, Ryan, are there any, any other philanthropies that you're you participate in? Well, I mean, we're always active uh, when it comes to uh, my son. Uh, my youngest is a uh, high performing autistic, so just really supporting him. Uh, him he just turned twenty on the seventh. Congratulations! So we do things with Autism Speaks uh, from time to time, and uh, we'll start doing more. Uh, there's some things that he wants to go and so stay tuned so you'll hear some more things about Mr. Blaze Bowen here real soon. Good we look forward to it he's an outstanding young man I've met him several times and then also I wanted to thank you for using the autograph ball to sign your baseball card um, this is actually one of my favorites I've got you have given me several this is my, uh, definitely one of my favorites there I love seeing him at Astro's uniform man. <laughs> Those were some good days so I gotta admit Right. So, hey, Ryan, to kind of start things off, tell us what it was like when you were drafted number 13, well, 13th overall in the first round of the 1986 Major League Draft by the Houston Astros, literally, I mean, right out of high school. What was that like? Oh, my goodness. You're taking me back so far. I'm going to have to be uh, hypnotized to remember that part back. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great time. I remember it. I remember that. Actually, it's a, lot, a whole lot. There's some holes in the memory after all these years. But, that was a very interesting day. I actually was in class, and uh, uh, I was pulled out of class. Well, I walked out of class. My class door, there's cameras set up outside my class door. And uh, they said, the principal wants you. And I'm like, what the, what, I mean, am I in trouble? <laughs> and I walk in the principal's office, and the principal tells this 18-year-old kid, hey, Ryan, you have a phone call. I'm like a phone call. I'm thinking, is my dad calling me? Am I in trouble? <laughs> and uh, he said, well, I'll leave you to it. And he walked out of the office, and it was uh, Reggie Waller, the area scout at the time, or the regional scout at the time uh, for the Houston Astros, uh, letting me know that I was uh, drafted uh, first by them, 13 overall, and that they wanted me to start my baseball, professional baseball career with them. So yeah, those were special times. That was the uh, first time I'd been in the principal's office and not being in some kind of trouble or, <laughs> or, 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 or giving them a, uh, some kind of excuse that I'm going home early. <laughs> uh, but so those, those were good times. I mean, you'll never forget those. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. So your family and friends, I'm sure they're busting with pride. Um, can you tell us about your call up to the bigs in 1991 with the Astros? Yeah, so actually I was in Tucson, Arizona, uh, uh, playing for, uh, for Skinner and um, uh, for the Tucson Toros. And it was funny how that happened, because you never know, you know. And it was early. It was early that day, and we called him Skinzo. And he was so cool. Uh, he called me and said, hey, Ron. He said, this is a skipper. And I'm like, hey, uh, how you doing, Skins? He said, well, I got a phone call uh, that, uh, and I'm thinking I'm about to get traded, right? He said, I got a phone call that this team needs a little bit of help. Uh, and uh, 
I was asked if you were available, um, if you could be packed in two hours, uh, because we're going to send you uh, to, to help this team. I'm like, well, what team am I about to help? He said, well, oh, oh the Houston, the, the parent club called, and they said he needs some help. And, uh, and I told them if they, that, they, that you were, I believe that you were ready, and they said, well, we're going to send him an airplane ticket. So if you're available, <laughs> so if you're available, they could be packed in two hours, uh, then they would love to have your help. And I said, absolutely. He said, can, can I get there any faster? <laughs> so I, remember, I remember leaving, getting to the airport, flying into Houston, and praying that I had about, I don't know, maybe 60 bucks in my pocket, right? I think we're in, in between paychecks and the minor leagues. And I was praying that I'm looking at the meter on the cab, and I'm like, oh, my God. Am I, do I have enough money? Because I mean, that's back when you had to meet with no Uber. So that meter, every quarter mile, it's turning. You know, I mean, I remember it was a 35, 45, you know, 48, 47. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not going to have enough to get there. <laughs> so I remember uh, getting there, and uh, I don't even know if I had enough to, uh, to tip. But I remember that was, that was bittersweet. Uh, then get to the dome and the walk in and you see your jersey with your name on it hanging in your locker. Uh, and then just like any rookie, I had put on tennis shoes and here comes Gerald Young. Hey, man, you going to go to the bench without your spikes? What's wrong with you? And then when I get to the bench, that same Gerald Young walks up to me and says, what you got spikes on for? What you pitching today? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the big leagues, rookie. Yeah. That's some good. That's some good rookie ribbon. But were, were there some other uh, moments like that in the uh, that that you can share on? Uh... I mean, just traditional old school baseball stuff. I think it was a little later that day. Uh, we were playing Chicago Cubs when I got called up and saw the great Andre Dawson running off the off the field, and then. Uh, one of my teammates said, uh, hey, look at the screen. So I look up at this big jumbotron screen to notice that it's my foot that's on fire. It's <laughs> to kept my shoes on fire. So, yeah, yeah, you know, so welcome to the big leagues, rookie, you know. They give you the good old-fashioned hot foot. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking up at the screen, and my shoe is on fire, you know. Oh, Typical baseball, old-school baseball, you know, the – the good old days. I'm sure the kids don't do stuff like that now. <laughs> right, right. We've seen some of the uh, seen some of those antics in the, uh, especially right now during COVID. You know, the guys in the dugout just trying to have fun and pass the time a little bit. Right. So, hey Ryan, what is your most memorable moment on or off the field, uh, just regarding the big leagues? I mean, getting called up that's that's huge. But uh, like, what was something on or off the field? Just something that you remember that stands out that you want to share with the kids or fans? Well, you know, that's, uh, I will, I will share, I will share this with the kids um, uh, on this forum. One of the things that, uh, that I'm proud of, one of the things that I did when I did play, I, I threw, so just for the kids that, you know, they have that cliche, it's not always winning or losing, it's how you play the game. You know, the first, the first uh, complete game in Marlin history, I threw that, uh, the Florida Marlin history, but that wasn't a win. It was a loss against Saberhagen. You know, the game was over before you got your, 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 your coffee, before you could get your popcorn, before you could sit back on your, on your seat. My line score went uh, one run, three hits, no errors, and uh, Saberhagen's was no runs, three hits, no errors. You know, uh, Vince Coleman let off with a single eye ground ball between second and the second base. Base hit, he's still second. Next guy, ground ball, second base. He's at third. One out, Eddie Murray, fly ball, center field. He scores one run, two out. I strike out the third batter, inning over, game over. <laughs> oh, game was over two hours and five. Two hours, two minutes. I think it was the fastest game. Ever. When I got in the clubhouse, I'm sitting on the bench. I went through the best game of the year and lost one to nothing. Uh, and the skipper, Renee Latchman, looks at me and he says, 
you got to know when to pitch. <laughs> and my response was, you made the lineup card. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the next week against St. Louis, I did, 1993, I did uh, pitch the first complete game win, uh, a shutout and win uh, against St. Louis. So I, I redeemed myself five days later. That's pretty cool. So your big league debut was also against the St. Louis Cardinals, wasn't it? Yeah, 91. My big league's uh, debut was against uh, St. Louis, against my childhood idol, the great Ozzy Smith. I think every little kid uh, back in those days playing any infielder position would try to emulate him fielding, do a cartwheel or something and try to throw the ball to first base. But it was quite amazing. I remember coming out the day after that uh, to meet my childhood idol and he looking at me and saying to me in real strong words that there was nobody so skinny should throw so hard. So that kind of made me smile. <laughs> That's that's kind of cleaned up, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, uh, uh, well, that's that's the uh, that's the interview version. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Understood. So your first big league strikeout, it was against uh, you got against Jose Okendo. Man, I remember Jose watching. Okendo. I remember yeah, watching I remember Okendo that. and and Ozzy Osbourne in the World Series, man. And there you are striking this dude out. Do you remember who your first walk was to? Yeah, that same Ozzy Smith. <laughs> I, 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 back in those jittery, nervous first days, you know, you uh, uh, walk too many people. Uh, uh, that, I think that's why when I'm teaching the kids now, when I do get the baseball lessons, I have a pretty good insight on how a kid feels inside uh, that's, uh, you know, that comes out through his body, through his actions, to be able to help them get over some of that anxiety to perform well. Yeah, but I it, it was a test when I when I when I pitched to Ozzy Smith. I always say that I walked him on six strikes. Uh, the umpire, I remember the first pitch I threw up. Um, I thought it was a strike. At least it was a minor league strike. And uh, the umpire stands straight up and just looks out at me. And so I had enough presence of mind not to say, you know, not you know. So I went, got back, I threw another pitch. It was awfully close, and it was ball two. And uh, he's staring at me. I'm like, where in my mind? I'm like, where in the heck is the strike zone? So then I throw a pitch. It's nowhere near the strike zone, and he calls a strike. And I said, oh, my goodness. This guy is just letting me know that he's in control, so I can't show any emotion. And when I mentioned that to Ozzy Smith, I said, when you're pitching against a future Hall of Famer, there is no strike zone? And Ozzy's <laughs> response was, uh, he's just testing you. He was just testing you, see what kind of see what you were made of. I said, try to walk you on six strikes because when I walked him, he cracked up laughing. So I don't know if it was something that the catcher said or the umpire said to Ozzy Smith. Well, I'll show this rookie or whatever. You know, I don't know. That's but awesome. But they were too close. If there were two strikes, uh, uh, Kevin, and if you didn't swing in any any other place, you were out. <laughs> you know, okay, what I'm hey man. So, Hall of Famer there, man, you know? Yeah, exactly, you know? So as they played in the National League, that was um, the, a fun thing about that is being a pitcher in the National League is you also got to get some plate appearances and swing yeah, the bat a little I bit. Enjoy, I think, you know, that was one of the things I really enjoyed. But then you, when you do get a double and you got to sprint to second base and got to get back on the mound if it's two outs, I don't know. The <laughs> 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 American League might be on to something. But uh, I had a couple of decent years, you know, swinging the bat, putting it in, and a badge of honor in the big leagues is being able to have the respect of your pitchers where they can't throw you just to give me a fastball. So they're either going to throw you at least a, at least a, a, a B-plus fastball, not a C fastball, or a first-pitch breaking ball, uh, and which they did. Uh, I beat my, my dear friend Jose Rio one day because he threw me over, get me over fastball, and I hit a base hit. Then he got upset, walked the next guy, and then, uh, you know, next guy got a base hit, I scored, and I beat him one nothing. And uh, in Houston, and uh, he he can't, but he let me know that that was uh, wasn't as good fastball my next at bat. And I can't tell you how happy I was to go sit down after that experience. <laughs> but uh, 
it was amazing. He threw a ball so hard that I didn't pick it up until it was in the batter's box with him. If it wasn't up and away, he would have killed me. So I, I, 98 miles an hour, 96, 98 miles an hour is awfully hard. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Heck yeah. So, Ron, when you were in high school, did you, were you, did you have notoriety as a, as a hitter as well? Yes. Uh, for a time, I, uh, I, uh, I actually um, had the state's a singles record for a single. I think it was 52 or 55 singles or something. As a as a hitter, I batted a little of 470 or something. Yeah, so I, I wanted to break Hank Aaron's record, you know, as far as home runs. Um, but you know, as you get better and better, you start. Coaches like to specialize you in some areas, you know what I mean, and uh, take the bat away from you. But yeah, I loved to hit in high school. We had a good time with it. I played right field. Uh, I actually was the uh, Gatorade Player of the Year as a shortstop in high school, not as a pitcher. That's cool. Did you start all four years in high school? Mm-mm. Not on my team. Not in well, Hanford is known as a baseball school, right? Yeah, it's a baseball school. I got called up to play with the varsity team when I was a sophomore uh, in a tournament we called the Easter Classic. I threw a no-hitter and was sent back to JV's the next week. <laughs> wow. That's a stacked team. Good Lord. That's because Dodgers' second round draft pick was a starting pitcher by the name of Tim Scott. Oh. Reggie Garcia, the 14th round pick for the Phillies. And back in those days, you only played two games a week, so you had two starting pitchers. Right? right. Timmy and Reggie. They were seniors. I was a sophomore. So that's kind of how that went in my school. I understand. So I did a little bit of research on you and found that you got your very first hit in your second big league game. Well, well your, your, your second start and uh, against the Pittsburgh Pirates, it was either Zane Smith or Vincente Pelosius. Do you remember which? Yeah, I believe it was Zane Smith. Was I have that baseball. It's in California. It's mounted. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. I didn't remember because I remember Zane Smith. It had to be. I like hitting up Zane Smith. He had a nice smooth wind up. Um, little little breaking ball, you could see it. Uh, he's just he was just a control pitcher. So yeah, Zane Smith. I so I have the I have the bat, and uh, I have the bat frame that I got my first base hit. That's awesome. The uh, so when you were young and you know in your playing days, high yeah, I'm school. Still young. I'm still young. Oh. Dog, right? <laughs> my bad. Poor choice of words. <laughs> Whenever. <laughs> um, when you were doing your, your workouts. Um, so what did you do? What kind of workouts and drills did you do to hone your skills? I mean, were there any particular things that you like to, I don't know, rotator cuff exercises? Was there anything that you would focus on? Well, during the off season, uh, one of the things that, I mean, those were the times, you know, people just don't see those times. A lot of running. So I was almost a cross country runner during the off season. <laughs> I would run literally from one side of my little small town to the other and back probably 15 miles uh, during the uh, day. Um, and then we would go to the rec center at night. Tim Scott and I, we grew up together, a big country as they call them. We bought a pitching mound uh, for the rec center. And the late Don Taylor, who taught Timmy and I both, uh, who caught Timmy and I both when we came home during the off season, God rest his soul, would catch us. And we would go through our paces with the infield fielding drills, a PFP indoors, just us and him. So you can imagine how hard that is when there's nobody else to relieve you. You know, one side and the other side, field and throwing, field and throwing, field and in, a, in a gym, it's just you and you, him and a baseball bat. So we really went through our paces, indoors, a lot of running, uh, no drills in particular, unlike, you know, just the old school indoor drills, uh, balance and direction drills on the mound, pitching location, four quadrant drills, things of that nature. Um, and, you know, uh, so that's what we did. And we just uh, went about it real hard as we got a little closer to the spring training and then we started long tossing a bit. I just wanted to make sure that my cardio uh, was above everybody else's. Well, I got the spring training. Um, my first couple of years, actually, uh, when spring training started, spring training got me out of shape. 
Because <laughs> I was in shape when I got there. So, you know, I was, the drills were nothing to me. So I stayed out afterwards when I first started and worked out with the veterans like Juan Augusto and, and we ran extra and Dwayne Henry uh, because, you know, I found out early that one's conditioning is not the same as someone else's. You know, um, Jason Grimley, Grimsley, he, uh, he did Tai Chi. That's how he kept himself in, in shape because he's missing a big toe. So he didn't like running, right? Huh. Uh, so karate was how he kept himself, uh, you know, in shape. And then you have others who just don't run well because of either in, in, in injuries or whatever. So it's all, so that's the one thing. You have to learn what works for you as soon as possible. You still got to go through the team drills, but if you need extra, you get extra. Hey, that reminds me of a question. Um, in terms of all the, the different stadiums that you played in, pitched in at the professional level, uh, big league level, what was your favorite stadium to pitch in? I always enjoyed Shea. I always had good success in San Francisco. Nobody wanted to play when it was cold. Uh, but from a performance standpoint, I like Shea. Um, I, I like Florida too. We had great stand. We had great fans in Florida when we first started. But just the visual, how my eyes saw home plate, uh, uh, the Mets Stadium seemed like you know it was right there. The way my eyes saw the backdrop and how that works, so it worked good for, for my vision, so it felt good. And uh, because it had power pitchers and shade, you know, Doc Gooden, Saberhagen, the mound was built to a guy like me, was built for a guy like me, right? Power. So, yeah, so the slope was for six-foot guys. They were 6'1", six, 6'3". Six, I'm right there. So the slope, even though they say everything is consistent, every mound is different. So it felt good. Uh, from how my mechanics were and my physical makeup, so yeah, that's all. And plus, it's man, New York, the Big Apple. That's a lot of. The cool thing is that's a lot of stress. It's a lot of pressure to play under in New York, and that's a place where you thrived. That's cool. Yeah, baseball is baseball. Once you're on the field, all that other pressure stuff that's outside the field. It falls yeah, away. That's man-made. Yeah, man you know, uh, on the field is on the field. You know. So once we can get from wherever we are to the field, then mano de mano. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. Well, man, um, I got one more question for you. Um, in, in retirement from professional baseball, um, what, what do you like to do with your time now in terms of, um, you know, some folks, whenever they retire, they or leave the game of baseball, they'll start a, a second career. Um, maybe they get into charity work, you know, philanthropy, hobbies, things like that. What do you like to do with your time? Well, I mean, I still have, I still have young kids. Uh, my oldest son is still in school. So TCU, watching him play football is always a pleasure. And then um, making sure, as we spoke earlier, Blaze has what he needs. And then outside of that, you know, trying to hit a golf ball straight. You there know, you go. The club sitting behind me. You know? I see so him. <laughs> I, uh, been doing quite a bit of that, um, but yeah. So, so that's a lot of what I like to do. I mean, we uh, have a you know little uh, business development company where we do some construction and things of that stuff. That we stay active on that, but uh, uh, that, that that's it. But for for my time, my spare time or whatever, uh, you know, just chasing my kids around and, uh, and and on a golf course. That's about it. So how, how old is Brandon now? Is he a junior at TCU? No, Brandon's a fifth-year senior. Senior, uh, okay, okay. Well, as they say, a red shirt senior. Uh, right. So he's, he graduated this uh, past uh, December. So, yeah, so he's just, you know, working, working out and hoping they, uh, they cancel the first game, unfortunately. So uh, he's at football practice right now. So, uh Hopefully they'll get it going and uh, get this COVID under control and at least uh, have some kind of season. Yeah, I hope so, man. We're praying for him. He's a great young man. Well, Ryan, man, I, I really appreciate you for uh, coming on and, and uh, joining us and sharing some of your memories with us. I really appreciate it. 
You're a good friend, and I appreciate you for doing this, man. You be safe. My, my pleasure. You too. Stay COVID free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah fingers crossed. All right. right? <laughs> okay, big man.